Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how I keep my hermit crabs substrate well maintained. And this will include temperature, humidity, food, water, stuff like that, and what I do to keep her happy and healthy. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Okay, so the first thing I do is I take the little spray bottle and right now it's about half full so I'm going to have to fill it and to keep her temperature at a good amount all I do is I spray the inside of the cage I don't do this daily but only when the humidity is up and it's really dry in there because hermit crabs tend to like their hermit crab her, their um, soil as moist as it possibly can be And the only thing that I recommend that you try not to do is try not to sp spray the hermit crab um, because I read that it can um, disturb them and you don't want to disturb them especially if they're about to molt and if I want it, if I want her to go on her log more what I'll do is I'll take her the spray bottle and I'll just spray down the log and this gets it nice and moist. She doesn't go on her log all that often like I thought she would. And then sometimes I'll, I'll spray down the little grassy area that I have right below it. And then I also have this little log that I got in the hermit crab kit at the pet store. And since she is just a baby, um, I'll put it leading up to the log because it is a little bit high up and I'm afraid that she can't reach it. So if I'm afraid that she can't reach it, I take this little blue log that I just showed you and I put it leading up to her log. So that way she can get up there a little bit easier and sometimes I'll spray it down like I am right now. So that, that's how I keep my hermit crab humidity up and as I showed you in the first video, um, I have a little lamp right there and so if her temperature gets too high or too low, um, I can always turn that on or off. And I have a little thermometer in the back of her cage, as I showed you, and this just helps to really monitor her temperature so that way I don't go overboard with the um, temperature wise and she won't pass away on me. Because I heard that if it does go, go over 80, 80 degrees, then it can, they can actually overheat and they can get killed. And if it goes below 75, it can, they can, they won't be able to survive. They'll be working too hard to keep their body warm and they can lose their life that way. And I do not want that to happen to a Sandy, so. That's why I have it in there. And now we're gonna go ahead and change her food and her water. Okay, so now I'm gonna change her food and water. So I'm gonna start with her salt water. I keep it in a little bottle of water so that way I, I can keep it away from the distilled water so I don't get things mixed up because sometimes I do tend to do that. So all I do is I give it a good shake and then I take what happens to be her salt water bowl. I'll go ahead and give that a good rinse. If there's any dirt or sand on the bottom of it, go ahead and 
rinse it out and rinse it off. And then I, get, I have to give it a good dry. Just do know that if you have any faucet water, which just happens to be tap water, left in the salt water bowl, then it can it can actually get mixed up in there. So you want to always make sure that you keep it dry. Same thing with the distilled water, which I will show you in just a second. This is just behind the camera. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fix it. There we go. <laughs> and now with the distilled water, as you can see, there's a lot of dirt in there. And it left some residue on the counter, so I'm going to have to clean that up, which I will do after. So I need to rinse that out. And now, go ahead, you can go ahead and pour in the distilled water. Don't do a lot because the distilled water bowl is actually very, very shallow, so you don't want to do a whole lot. I usually only do about half the bowl. And so that way she can still go in there if she wants to. And I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more salt water because that doesn't look like a whole lot. So I'm gonna add a little bit more. All right, that should be more than enough. I think I actually overfilled that. So, <laughs> and now with her seashell, I actually don't change this one too often, but she does go in there. Just cause she has two water bowls, two other ones I should say. And then I just do the same thing as I would with the other two water bowls, give it a good dry. And this one, I don't put the salt water in, I usually put only the distilled water in. Now, since I've already changed her food in my first video, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward. So, if you guys want to go look at my first video to see how I do her food, then go ahead and go right to the video. Okay, so now that I'm done with doing her food and her water, all I'm going to do is I take her distilled water and I usually place it right around there and then I'll take her salt water and place it right in the sand by the seashells. And with her food, 
I usually put it right next to her little home thing. And if I have enough left, um, I'll put a little bit of her old food in. I don't have much left, so but I am going to just sprinkle a little bit in there. That's good enough. And that's it. Now the cleanup afterwards is fairly simple. All I do is I take a wet washcloth and I just wipe it down. Get any dirt off the counter. And since I did spill a little bit of the water on the counter, I, I just take the washcloth and just wipe that up. And then I'll go ahead and rinse it in the faucet. And then after I'm done cleaning up the mess, I usually go ahead and take her food and the spoon that I use back to her cage. So that is going to be it for today's video. Please comment, like, subscribe, thumbs up, and also make sure you click the bell icon so that way you get notified for whenever I upload. See you next time. Bye!